the day you stop growing. We at made believe that an investment in knowledge pays best interest. That's the reason why we have gathered here today. Good afternoon to eat each one of you. I take this opportunity to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Chandrakant Raju, affiliated with the Center for Studies in Civilization in New Delhi. I also extend my welcome to Professor Emil Goyal, Director Mate, Dr. S. S. Deswal, Dean Academics, distinguished head of the department's learned teachers, and my dear students. Welcome to the world of knowledge, mathematics, and its teachings. They say, the study of mathematics, like the Nile, begins in minuteness but ends in magnificence. We are indeed honored that we have amongst us renowned professor of computer science and mathematics, Dr. C.K. Raju, associated with the Center for Studies in Civilization, New Delhi. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a huge round of applause. May I request Professor Emil Goyal, Director Mate, to present a bouquet to our guest speaker. Dr. C.K. Raju is known for his authoritative command over the philosophy and application of maths and science. He is here to deliver a lecture on calculus, history and its teaching. May I take this opportunity now to invite Professor Emil Goyal, Director Mate, on the dais to introduce and welcome our illustrious speaker. Namaskar. Welcome to everyone and Professor Raju. Well, it's difficult to fully introduce Professor Raju and due to paucity of time, I'll see very little, but when you listen him, you'll know who he is. Dr. C.K. Raju holds a PhD from the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, preceded by an MS in Mathematics and a BSc honors in Physics from Institute of Science, Mumbai. He taught for several years in Pune University before joining CDEC to play a key role in building India's first parallel supercomputer, Param. He was a fellow of the Indian Institute of Academic Study, Shimla. He has long been a professor of computer science and mathematics in various universities and institutions in India and abroad. He has taught computer science on TV and has built and maintains computer software for educational and industrial use. He is life member of the Indian Association of General Relativity and Gravitation, the Indian Society for Industrial and Applicable Mathematics, etc. He helped initiate the project of history of Indian science, philosophy, and culture, and was an editor of the Journal of Indian Council of Philosophical Research. He is vice president of the Indian so Social Science Academy and also the People's Council of Education. He is affiliated with the Center for Studies in Civilization, New York. I think here I will stop and I will give the floor to Professor Raju. Professor Raju, we hearty welcome to you at this Maharaja Grishan Institute of Technology. Please. So thank you very much for inviting me here. And I'm sorry I got a bit late because the taxi driver had a different idea of what the shortest route was. <laughs> so uh, let me, uh, because the time is a bit short, I understand that you people like to go home around 3.45. So I will uh, try to speed up my talk. It's already 3.10. I need at least half an hour, 45 minutes. So. Uh, let me uh, therefore start right away. So this is about calculus. All of you certainly know the calculus, right? You are all engineering students. You understand the calculus? Okay. So I'm going to be asking you some questions. I hope you will be able to answer them. 
All right. So uh, let me start with a very simple thing, extremely simple thing. All of you believe in Satyam Ev Jayate? So say loudly, Satyam Ev Jayate. Once more, with feeling. All right. Now I want to know, in this hall, how many people have never told a lie in their life? Please raise your hands. What is this? It is only a slogan, is it? Kali Nara hai? Aapki katni kuch aur hai, katni kuch aur hai? I think that you need to consider this. If, uh, let me ask you maybe another question. Was there anything valuable in Indian culture? There was. If there was something valuable, then why is it necessary to tell lies about it? If it is something valuable, let us tell the truth. Why do we think it is always necessary to lie, to put a spin on things, even if you have the truth? This is something terrible. Look at what happened, for example, said India had uh, space travel. It is a wild claim. It's an absolutely wild claim. Why do you need to make such wild claims? I think that's the problem because the world laughs. It gives a very bad image. People like me who have been working for 25 years, this project of history of Indian science, philosophy, culture was mentioned. It's about 25 years old. We have produced 100 volumes. Mine was the 50th volume in that. And we feel very perturbed that we put in such hard work and we get out something which is of great value, but nobody knows about it. And the whole world is laughing at these wild claims. So this is extremely damaging for the image. It is not that we did not have, we had plenty. But you have to talk about the truth and not tell lies because you say you talk about the truth, but you see you think your advantage lies in telling lies. Okay. So uh, this is a huge effort. All right, Indian culture. And uh, now let me uh, skip over it and go to... Uh, it wasn't only the CDAC Param supercomputer I helped to build, but I also initiated this project of history of Indian science, philosophy, culture. And uh, my volume in this was the... It's called Cultural Foundations of Mathematics. It was the 50th volume. Basically what it showed is that calculus developed in India. Calculus was transmitted from India to Europe and it was not understood. I hear a lot of people talking at the back. Uh, are you able to see what is written there? If you can't see, why don't you come in front? And the central point is this, you are completely disinterested in knowledge. And your present condition, your colonization was the result of this total disinterest in knowledge. This is the central point. That when you tell lies, you tell that as a shortcut because you think that knowledge is not needed. Anybody can tell any lies without any effort. If you want to tell the truth, then you need effort, then you need knowledge. And you are not interested in knowledge. This is exactly the point that I am making. And we we'll bring it out. So if you see this book, well, the image is not coming out very nicely. It's a very fat book, therefore I didn't bring it. Now this is about the development of the calculus that it developed as Ganit, the calculus that you study. We are going to come to it shortly. It was transmitted to Europe. Well, Europeans stole it to be precise. They had a college in Cochin where they were translating a whole lot of Indian texts into Latin and those texts were taken abroad. They failed to understand it. That's a very important point. Because when you copy, you see, if you see, two people can copy, they give answer sheets all the time. But the person who has copied does not understand. If you ask him a question, he can't answer, he gets confused. So even simple names, for example, when they go to another culture, they are mispronounced. So therefore, they converted Ganit to mathematics. Now, what's the difference between Ganit and mathematics? We will dwell on that a little bit. And that, during British rule, Colonialism gave you back a certain system of education. The system of education which you are following is colonial education. It is not meant for your needs. It is meant for somebody else's needs. It is meant to convert you into slaves. And you will remain slaves till such time as you acquire knowledge. 
If you shun knowledge, if you don't want, you have made slaves because of ignorance. You don't have knowledge of calculus and so on. You don't have knowledge of what this was done, why this was done. You have heard of limits in calculus? Yes. What are limits? What? A little louder, please. What is approaching value? Is that a definition? What is that? No. That has nothing to do with limits. A finite function can have maximum, minimum value. We'll come back to that. So you study it, you hear of limits, you don't understand. All right? So this was packaged, this calculus which was returned was packaged with a false history that Newton invented it, Leibniz invented it, and it was all built up in Europe. That's how I learned it. And it was declared to be superior, rigorous. Your NCRT texts say we want to teach about limits. We cannot explain what limits are, but we want to teach about them. That is why you learn about limits, you know, but you don't know what limits are. So this is the colonial calculus. And the point is, if you are so confused about it that you don't know what is the limit, how can you check which is better? The product we developed or what you study today? Because in order to compare two things, you need knowledge of that. You need to be able to say, yes, I know this is better and that is worse. If you don't know just some vague things, just something to write in an answer sheet, something to give an answer and get some marks, that's not what knowledge is. All right? So calculus we invented was Ganit and what you learn is mathematics. And what is the difference? Well, I have a newspaper article on that. It is on my website. You can perhaps take a look. Let me explain it briefly. Three differences. All right. The first is that Ganit is about calculation. Whereas mathematics is about proof. You prove that the limit of something exists. Limit of 1 by n as n tends to infinity is 0. You prove it. All right. And you prove it deductively from certain axioms which most of you don't know. Axioms about real numbers and so on. Second thing is that Ganit allows empirical proof, Pratyaksh Praman. If I ask you why is 2 plus 2 equal to 4, what is your answer? Yes, I am asking you. Why is 2 plus 2 4? Yes? You can see and count. When you can see something, that is empirical, that is Pratyaksh. That is not allowed in mathematics. You cannot talk about what you can see. You can only talk about certain axioms. So mathematics disallows it. It prohibits such proofs. It declares them to be inferior. It declares you to be inferior because you only did Ganit. You never understood what mathematics is. This was the basis of racism and well, I am not going into that. The third is that Ganit is meant for practical applications of uh, uh, mathematics if you like, which, whereas mathematics is linked to spiritual and religious beliefs which you don't perhaps know about, even the very word mathematics is related to that. So let's take a simple example of the so-called Pythagorean theorem. All right? So, did you study it? Did you give a proof of it? It's a wrong proof, but it is supposed to be a deductive proof from the elements. All right? So the idea is that you have some axioms and you prove it from there. But for the practical application, what you need to do is you want to calculate the hypotenuse from a knowledge of the sides. You want to calculate square root of the sum of squares. The square root is not mentioned in the elements which gives the Pythagorean theorem. Or for navigation, you want to calculate from a knowledge of the hypotenuse and one angle, you want to calculate the two sides like latitude and longitude. So you need to calculate sine values. The moment you get into sine values and square roots, you cannot be precise, you cannot be exact. Do you know the exact value of root 2? Or of pi? No, or of sine of one degree? No, you don't. That is the critical question. So uh, this is uh, one kind of a difference. And in fact, if you look at the Manav Shulva Sutra, it actually states the Pythagorean theorem so-called as in terms of the square root of the sum of squares of the sides. So the square root is involved, that was also there, I'm not saying it was the first, Babylonian tablets have square roots, the Rhine papyrus has square roots, but they don't have the philosophy of square roots which is there in the Shulva Sutra because all those documents were destroyed. As for mathematics, what is the meaning of the word mathematics? Where does it derive from? 
मथेसिस मथेसिस अकॉर्डिंग टू प्लेटो अफलातून नाम सुना है ना अफलातून के डायलॉग्स में एक कहानी है सुखरात और गुलाम लड़के की जिसमें कि वो बताता है अफलातून या सुखरात बताता है कि मैथमेटिक्स का आत्मा से संबंध है घनिष्ठ संबंध है वो पुरानी चीजों की याद दिलाता है आपके पिछले जन्म की याद दिलाता है दैट इज द डायलॉग कॉल्ड मेनो बाई प्लेटो वेर दिस इज डिफाइंड एंड इट हैड अ वेरी डीप सीटेड रिलीजियस मीनिंग विच इज नॉट एक्सप्लेन टू यू दैट रिलीजियस मीनिंग वॉज चेंज सो यू कैन टेक लुक एट सम ऑफ दीज पेपर्स ऑफ माइंड where i have taught mathematics with a different philosophy and you will find it on the link you will find on my home page if you just do ck raju on google you will get it so this is a paper on teaching mathematics there is a book euclid and jesus how and why the church changed mathematics and christianity across to religious wars i have a copy of the book here physical copy if somebody is interested you can take a look or you can get it on kindle anyway what is our point which is better the calculus you learn or the calculus which developed in india all right and uh, we require some knowledge of the philosophy of mathematics and this knowledge is unfortunately not there it is not there in iits iit professor head of the department didn't know basic things about what a set is he could not define a set in iit ahmedabad he taught in iit mumbai for so many years he doesn't know these basic things i was in iit delhi i left it because the teachers didn't know anything i left it very shortly i attended only one class i asked only one question and then i said it's no use continuing here this is the state of affairs in iit you can imagine what is the state everywhere else so let us see whether you understand the calculus that you study let me make a reality check quick reality check okay what is the derivative of e raised to x very good everybody knows it right what is e raised to x what is this you know the derivative of e raised to x you don't know what is e raised to x exponential function please define it for me yes please 1 plus x by 2 plus x square by 2 factorial something wrong and that's all dot 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 what is this dot 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 <laughs> what is this infinity up to infinity how do you make an infinite sum come on quickly calculate 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 up to infinity of course it can be calculated there is a ramanujan sum it is minus 1 by 12 if you don't believe me check it out that is called the ramanujan sum All right. So the point is, you are playing around with infinity. There is nothing obvious. You cannot actually do it. What do you mean by dot dot dot? It is just your imagination. You have to have a precise answer. And what is your precise answer? If you don't have a precise answer, there is a problem. Basically, you have learnt a formula. You don't know what is e raised to x. You never learnt. Nobody taught you because you cannot learn limits. If you want to learn, even metaphysically, if you want to do it, you want to learn about formal real numbers, which you don't learn, and to learn about real numbers, you need to know about set theory, which you don't learn. Formal set theory, not naive set theory, not those Venn diagrams they put in uh, NCERT school text where they say a set is a collection of objects, nothing of the sort. All right. So you don't know what is d by dx. You know? Yes. Derivative. define it man define it mathematics is supposed to be precise right give me a precise definition don't rate of change what is this rate of change has to be connected with time is it yes please limit x time for that substitute by left hand derivative right hand derivative no no just define some derivative doesn't matter how do you know that such a limit suppose such a limit does not exist then provided limit exists provided when does it exist that we need to check whether it exists depends on the function or depends on the number system it depends on the function and not on the number system also on the number system supposing i want to calculate limits on a computer how will i do it
can't be done that way. That's not how it is done. Give slope, gives rate of change. Slope of what? Slope of the tangent. What is the tangent? That's my next question. What is the tangent? Does anybody know what is the tangent? You see, this is what I'm trying to illustrate. You people have got degrees, you have come, you are in a, this thing, you are not able to answer the most basic questions. I would like to draw it. I thought I would have a whiteboard, so I have not drawn it here. Supposing I have a curve which goes like this. Okay, goes on increasing. Now I draw a tangent at this point. It will cut the curve at infinitely many points. It has nothing to do with touching the curve at one point. On the other hand, let us suppose I have a, a, I have a curve which is like a V shape. I can have so many tangents at the bottom which touch it at one point. None of them is the derivative. अरे मैक्सिमम स्लोप बोल रहे हैं पहले एक डिफाइन तो करें मैक्सिमम स्लोप होगा मिनिमम स्लोप होगा मैक्सिमम स्लोप से कैसे बन जाएगा you have to give a very precise definition. He attempted one, but he does not know the definition. So you don't have a concept of a tangent. You have a wrong concept of a tangent that it is something which touches the curve at one point. It's a completely wrong concept. It's a very widespread concept. So you are taught derivative in terms of slope of tangent and you don't know what tangent is. A tangent to a circle touches it at one point. It's not true for any general curve can touch it at any number of points. It has nothing to do with what happens at other points. It's purely a local thing. A tangent line is defined with respect to the derivative. It's a best linear approximation. Well, I won't go into that. The point is, uh, we don't know what is e raised to x. We don't know what is d by dx. We talk about it in terms of tangents. And all of you are certified that you have knowledge of calculus. You studied it in 12th standard. You study it now. You use it. You know all the formulae. You don't understand what is d by dx. You don't understand what is e raised to x. This is the problem. That you don't have the knowledge. You don't know that you don't have the knowledge. You think you have some ideas and that constitutes knowledge. And this is how you are fooled, continuously fooled. And this is the problem that occurs. All right. So you cannot compare. Why am I talking about knowledge? Because if you don't have the knowledge, you cannot compare. Is it better to do with limits, without limits? You don't know what is the limit. Something approaching, something not approaching. What is this? One person approaching another. Where is the limit? No, this is all very vague stuff. All right. So the point is, if you don't know, you cannot change. And uh, this is what the colonial education system has done to you, makes it very difficult to change anything. Especially from a position of ignorance, that ignorance is calculated, it is part of the education system to drill ignorance into you. This is how it was designed. They never told you this. But this is how the Western education system was designed. It was designed for missionaries. It was designed to keep you ignorant so that you would remain superstitious. You would believe all sorts of things. You would believe authority. You read some of my other papers. I won't go into the details. Let me stick to the idea that if you want to have any kind of freedom, if you want to have any kind of Swaraj, then you need to have knowledge. You cannot do, get it from a position of ignorance. That ignorance is meant to suppress you. All right? This is the simple point I want to make. Now let me just give you an interim summary of what I'm talking about. That calculus as mathematics has hindered science. It has hindered science. It led to the failure of Newtonian physics. You know Newtonian physics? I will not get into it. Most probably you don't know what it is. <laughs> we won't get into the details. The point is that it led to the failure of Newtonian physics. A bad understanding of calculus is precisely what led to the failure of Newtonian physics. A conceptual misunderstanding. Nothing to do with facts, not about quantum mechanics, not about electrodynamics. It was a conceptual misunderstanding about time, which came because people have confused ideas. OK, there must be fluxion, there must be flow, smooth flow, and so on. That is how you define it. The point is it also makes math difficult. And one of the reasons, does any one of you here know how to do elliptic integrals? No, no. You can do that with calculus as Ganit. 
I just demonstrated some point of time. So if you return to calculus as Ganit, then it becomes possible to do it. It is possible to, with there is a different philosophy, slightly different philosophy. It makes math easy. Lots of people can learn it. You can learn it properly, like you understand 2 plus 2 empirically. Pratyaksh, using the Pratyaksh, it's very easy. If you want to understand it using set theory, then you should understand that Bertrand Russell in his uh, Principia takes 368 pages to prove 1 plus 1 equal to 2. And you will not understand those 368 pages. I should have brought a copy of that. 368 pages to prove 1 plus 1 equal to 2. It's very difficult. And he says that's the principal value of formalism, that it makes it difficult. So it makes science better and it leads to better technology. Today, you know that your computers are going out, that the next generation technology is that of quantum computing, but you are stuck because there is a conceptual problem about quantum mechanics. You don't know how to scale up a quantum computer. That's the chief technological problem. So unless you have a clear-cut understanding, and if you have a clear-cut understanding, you can solve that problem. I have a series of articles on this in the Physics Education Journal. They are listed on my home page. Please take a look. So I can't tell you the whole story. Take a look at uh, the MIT video. Uh, there is also an abstract for the talk. And that abstract, uh, that's a very big institution. It is supposed to be the top institution in the world in terms of technology. MAIT, you have to cancel off one A. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, this is a place where all your all our bright uh, students go. And you can see how they were, how they interacted. They were not able to. You can watch also the version which I gave at the Indian Institute of Science a few months ago. And uh, all the links are there. See Kerajudrapne. Or you can check out the references. It's a very long story. There's a book of mine called Time Towards a Consistent Theory that was published long ago, which explains why Newtonian physics failed because of a conceptual problem. There is also a recent expository paper which explains how if you correct Newton in physics, you come to a better theory of gravitation, and so on. And there is an article, philosophical article on eternity and infinity when you're talking about limits, you have brought in infinity. When you bring in infinity, you have to connect it to the theological notion of eternity. Anant se anant kaal jod jata hai. Aur usse theology of reason, kya bolenge? Tark ka bhagwan gyan. Now, how do you translate? I don't know how to translate something of that sort. Theology is knowledge of God and reason may be tark, may be akal. It used to be akal, it's tark so far as West is concerned. So why this was misunderstood in the West and how that led to bad science, which you study, please take a look. So uh, this is the target that you are able to make it easy, you are at least able to understand it. Somebody asks you questions, it looks very shabby. There are so many people here and you are not alone. You see the same state of affairs in MIT and Harvard. There are students from Harvard there. They are not able to define what a real number is. They are not confident. They know something. They know more than you. But they don't know enough. Right? So, and it is related to future technology and this knowledge is needed if you are interested in independence of any kind, in Swaraj of any kind. All right. So, uh, I have not been able to change the educational system. You are young, maybe you will be able to change it if you are interested. If you are only interested in earning money, then you will spend your less of your life as a slave. Your children will also be slaves. We have been slaves for so long, two centuries. And the process will continue. If you are interested, then maybe you can change it. I assume that some of you are interested. I don't think all of you are interested. I think some of you are interested. And in living a life of dignity, and I am addressing myself primarily to those, so let me tell you a little bit about how these things happen, how the calculus developed in India, how it was misunderstood in Europe. So it's not just calculus, everything. See, if you look at arithmetic, algebra, trigonometry, probability, all of this developed in India, it was transmitted to Europe. And uh, it developed as Ganit, it was transmitted as mathematics, and it was misunderstood. How do we know it was misunderstood? Just as you misunderstand 2 plus 2 equal to 4, and you are not uh, somehow concerned, you are not concerned that you have been dominated for so long, you want to give, uh, you are willing to give slogans, but you are not willing to confront the actual facts of your present position, which is very bad. Think of what India was, think of what you are today. 
the best that you can aspire for is, well, never mind. So the point is that when people copy, they make mistakes, and that is why the West misunderstood it. And if you use a word like Arabic numerals, now what does Arabic numerals mean? Arabic numerals? Does anybody know? Why are they called Arabic numerals? No, but why are they called Arabic numerals? Wasn't it the same mathematics 2 plus 2 equal to 4? They used Roman numerals like... Correct. Correct. They used Roman numerals, but is it only a matter of numerals? Or is it a matter of arithmetic? How? No, no, nothing to do with decimal system. Decimal system is a secondary story. Yes, India had the decimal system, but that's a separate story. You can do calculation with the sexagesimal system like the Babylonians did. Or you can do it uh, with some other system like the Mayas did. No, I think you're not getting the point. Let me just quickly explain. The point is that Indian arithmetic was efficient. If you work with Roman techniques of arithmetic, they use an abacus, which is not efficient. And because it's not efficient, the merchants were suffering a disadvantage. It was first sent to Baghdad, Beit al-Hikmah, without Khwarizmi, and it was later translated into Latin, and therefore it came to be known as algorithms. What you study, addition, multiplication, division, that is Indian arithmetic. I don't know why you want to change it. Do you want to change it to Vedic mathematics? Yeah? It was Indian. Right? And that's the mathematics which you study today is also the way it was done in the time of the Ved, not the Vedic mathematics, that is some mental techniques which are of no consequence, which are not there in the Ved, which are not there in Indian tradition. So when efficient uh, arithmetic was imported via Kurtaba, Cordoba in the 10th century, then via the Florentine merchants in the 13th century, it was misunderstood. So how was it misunderstood? Because what the Pope did, what the Pope did, he thought that there is some magic to the shape of the numerals. That is why he said Arabic numerals. So he got a special abacus constructed. Because he thought the only way to do arithmetic is to use an abacus the way Romans do it. And therefore, he got this constructed and uh, therefore the word Arabic numerals. This is the abacus that, this is the first Arabic numerals when they came to Europe from Cordoba. So he has understood the place value system, but he has still got a special abacus constructed. They were called apices. And that itself shows the mistake. The very term Arabic numerals shows that it's a mistake. It's not the term. It's the method of using place value to do arithmetic computations efficiently, which cannot be done like this. Let's take the word zero. It's supposed to be the contribution. Now this word zero comes from cipher or cipher. Cipher, you understand? Mysterious code. Why is zero mysterious? Doesn't exist in nature. No, no. Why did these guys find it mysterious? Because it's not that uh, Indians found it mysterious, it is that Europeans found it mysterious. That's the storyline. So Europeans found it mysterious because Roman numerals are additive. So if you are writing 12, X, I, I, so it is 10 plus 1 plus 1. But if you are writing 10 or 120, it is not the same thing as 1 plus 2 plus 0. So you know the law that you must write a check in words as well as uh, numerals? This was started by Florentine merchants because they were unhappy with zero. Said zero is mysterious, it has no value in itself, but it adds any amount of value to the preceding. So you, at the end of a contract, you sign a contract for 120 and then you fill in lots of zeros and say you actually signed a contract for 12 million. That is why Florence introduced that law and that's the law we still have. So this was the mystery of zero. And that law was first introduced in Florence in 13th century. Let's take the word cert. You have heard that square root of 2 is cert. And the word cert comes from the Latin certus, which means deaf. Why is square root of 2 deaf?
Why square root of 2 def? So this is the case because in, if you see the Shulbha Sutra for example, square roots are expressed in terms of the diagonal of a rectangle. So the diagonal is called karna. So also the hypotenuse. Now, square root of 2 is expressed in those terms and if square root of 2 happens to be bad, they would say bad karna. But the word karna also means ear. So bad karna was wrongly translated as deaf, bad ear meaning deaf. Right? So these are the kinds of mistakes that Europeans have made, which you still have, which you still study, which you never ask why something is called as such. So let's take trigonometry. The very word trigonometry is wrong because these things connect to the circle, not to the triangle. It's not about measuring a triangle, it's about measuring a circle. So uh, you have the word sine. You know about the sine function? Yes? So sine comes from the Latin sinus, which means four. And it is derived from the Arabic jeb. It's a translation of the Arabic jeb, jeb, four. Right? That is how it was translated. What has the sine function got to do with the pocket? Yeah? So this is because, again, it's a, a mistake because the term for it in Sanskrit was jiva or jya. Jya or Jiva. The Jiva was, became Jiva and it was only written as the consonantal skeleton without the vowels. So Ja and Ba, it was misread as J. And that is why your Jiva, which is connected to a circle, got translated to J, which is connected to the sign. How do you define sign, by the way? It's a conceptual error, not just a linguistic error. What's the definition of sign? What's the definition of sign? Sign of X. Yeah? Opposite side upon hypotenuse has to be done with reference to a triangle. Supposing I have an angle greater than 90 degrees, sine is not defined. Sir, eight unit ke usko circle mein kumao. Little louder, please. Sir, eight unit ke matlab kisi length ko circle mein kumao. Jara jor se bolye sunai nahi de raha. Sir, eight unit ke kisi length ko circle mein kumao aur jiska vertical mein jo bhi uski value aati, jitni bhi uski length aari hogi, wo that is the half chord. That is the half chord. So that definition is a different definition from opposite side upon hypotenuse. Because opposite side upon hypotenuse relates to a right angle triangle. If my x is greater than 90 degrees, it cannot exist because there can be only one right angle in a triangle. So circle ka definition or triangle ka definition may farak hai. And this is the uh, mistake which takes place. So this is the definition you are talking about, right? And that is the definition is the circle. It is connected with the circle in Indian tradition, but never with, uh, I mean, of course, it's also connected with triangle. There is a triangle there, but that triangle will go on changing, right? What will be opposite side when it is greater than 90 degrees? It will be that side. Okay. So there is a curved line. Now let me skip over some of this. I think I'm running short of time. Compass box, how do you measure a curved line? If you don't measure a curved line, how do you define an angle? What is an angle of one degree? Can somebody define it for me? Very elementary question. I am asking you, if you don't have knowledge, then the Suraj can never happen. I am asking a very simple question. What is d by dx? What is e raised to x? Let's go and tell you. Now it's a very simple question. What is one degree? Angle of one degree. Line that rotates of a circle has to have a circle. Why do you need the line then? Line, rotate, pagera, jara, taklif ho gai na? Simple definition DJ. Rotate kar rahe, kis speed se rotate kar rahe, kis acceleration se rotate kar rahe, uska farak padega, nahi padega. Size se farak padega, nahi padega. Kitna bada circle lehte hain se farak padega, nahi padega. Why won't it be? Because it's a circle property. So how do you define the angle without the circle? So where did the line come from? Two lines of the line are not called the angle. Which one is not? It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Just trying to explain that your basic concepts of mathematics are completely confused. Whether it is 2 plus 2 equal to 4. Whether it is angle. Whether it is sine. Whether it is this. Or e raised to x. Or the derivative. 
you have a problem and i just want to communicate to you that it is because of this problem that you cannot make a comparison you cannot decide what is better that is the issue axiomatic definition chaliye let me skip this i am trying to change this let's uh, go on to why calculus developed it developed in india for two reasons first was in connection with agriculture and second was overseas trade these were the main sources of wealth agriculture and overseas trade and uh, for agriculture you need a precise calendar for which you need a precise astronomical model for overseas trade you need to know how the curved earth goes you will need to be able to calculate latitude and longitude for that you need sign values and for that you need calculus so this is the idea and uh, both of these things require precise sign values and it was in the context of precise sign values that calculus first developed with aryabhat in the uh 5th century so aryabhat of course uh, he made a radical departure how do you calculate sign values how do you calculate sin of 1 degree huh by taylor theorem are bhai ye to 5th sadi ki baat kar rahe hain taylor to newton ka student tha wo kahan se aa gaya theorem kahan se aa gaya तो थ्योरम यूज ही नहीं करता था यही तो बात हो रही है गणित और मैथमेटिक्स की कि थ्योरम की बात ही नहीं आ रही है कैलकुलेशन की बात चल रही है कि आर्यभट्ट ने पांचवी सदी में कुछ किया तो उसने कैसे किया या आपको अगर टेलर थ्योरम नहीं दिया गया है आपको मालूम नहीं है साइन फंक्शन के लिए अप्लाई करता है कि सभी फंक्शन के लिए अप्लाई करता है क्या टेलर एक्सपांशन कंडीशन ऑन इन्फिनिट डिफ्रेंशियबिलिटी इन्फिनेटली डिफ्रेंशियबल फंक्शन पर अप्लाई करता है क्या नहीं नहीं कंटिन्यूस इन्फिनेटली डिफरेंशियबल इट स्टिल डज नॉट अप्लाई इट हैज टू बी एनालिटिक प्लीज एनालिटिक वॉट इज एनालिटिक सो दे बिग प्रॉब्लम लेट्स लीव दैट आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग यू हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट साइन ऑफ वन डिग्री सो दे सिंपल यू हैव एन आंसर समबडी हैज एन आंसर नो ऑल राइट द पॉइंट इज दैट यू डू इट जोमेट्रिकली फिफ्टीन डिग्रीज थर्ट डिग्रीज फोर्टी फाइव डिग्रीज वेर दर इज सिमेट्री यू आर एबल टू कैलकुलेट If you want to calculate for one degree, you cannot do it like that. So Aryabhat had a way of doing it, and he calculated these values 3.75 degrees apart. And you are still doing the same things in school: 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and you are not doing the simple technique. Just involves a rule of three, arithmetic rule of three, which is also called linear interpolation. You don't need Taylor, and you don't need his theorem. and it was not done by him he was a disciple of newton so he made a striking shift to differential equations to the numerical solution of differential equations and that numerical solution is obtained just by simple linear interpolation or what is called rule of 3 when you talk of rate of change you do it like that rule of 3 is what if five people can do some work in 3 days in how many days can 10 people do the work that's rule of 3 that is where rate of change comes in for the derivative is this is today called euler's method are you familiar with euler's method of solving differential equations this is euler had studied indian text he did not acknowledge his sources so the point is that uh, well i will maybe skip this he gives only sign differences khanda ja and not ja all right and uh, this is how he gives his table this is a table of sign values quite a poetic thing difficult to explain because he has a different numerical notation there is only one sanskrit word there which is at the end kala dhaja it is dhaja in minutes kala is minutes vikala is third so this is what the translation is and the point is that he has done it in a way which allows you to solve euler's method as you know so called is a general way of solving any differential equation numerically may not be the most efficient way but it's a general way which can solve any differential equation and therefore once you have a technique for solving differential equations that's the heart of the calculus not the taylor's theorem but the solution of differential equations the numerical solution of differential equations but it has to be done numerically that's the point which you can do even when the solution may not exist all right so uh, you have this and uh, now i don't know this is a bit technical i should skip it the point is that aryabhat solved different equations by a recursive process differential equations and um, he is talking about uh, this is a little hard word to translate 
dvai runam and that dvai runam second difference or second of the differences depends so this is the formula and as you can see this cannot be used as an algebraic equation it's a recursive process okay so maybe i uh, skip that second difference as you know about quadratic interpolation stirling's formula and so on so this was the quarrel between aryabhat and brahmagup brahmagup said you use quadratic interpolation you don't need so many values it's foolish to do that bhata and his disciples pardon me no this is numerical solution of differential equations what is your integral the integral how do you define an integral how do you define an integral what how do you define it an integral this give me a definition right area and curve is like tangent is the inverse of differentiation that's not a definition no that's not a definition of integral because there can be so many inverses there will always be an undetermined constant what's the definition of integral so you see you don't study the riemann integral you don't study the lebesgue integral you don't relate the two you don't do the fundamental thing of calculus let's leave that out okay this is a numerical method of solving differential equations which works in general which works for any function which can be used and which can be used widely all right uh, so the important thing is that this is a non terminating process you do not get a precise thing it is like square root of 2 it is like the value of pi you can get 3.1415 you cannot get infinite precision you cannot do dot 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 it's a non terminating process so what exactly does the dot 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 mean i think i'm running out of time so let me uh, uh, quickly give you what happened how this developed over 1000 years and this led to what is called madhas sign table this is found from this is from the yukti deepika as you can see shreshtham naam varishtha naam and so on this is accurate to thirds this is again sign values that aryabhat had accurate to thirds but the degree of accuracy is extremely high it is to thirds sexagesimal notation if you understand this is not decimal this is sexagesimal because it's used in the context of astronomy where the sexagesimal system was used okay so uh, all right i will uh, skip this the various values of pi this is the value of pi in sexagesimal notation it's a more accurate value correct to the seconds and then there is one which is devo vishwa sthali bhrigu which is correct to the thirds and so on and you have uh, very highly accurate values like the one given by madhava sangam gram which is uh, this accurate to 11 decimal places okay so this was used in navigation i will skip that because i think these days you use gps you perhaps don't know how valuable this technology was at that point of time but uh, determine the size of the earth how do you determine the size of the earth do you know how to determine the size of the earth how do you know the earth is round how do you determine it yeah no you can just determine it by looking at the horizon the horizon is so far and from that you can calculate the size of the earth it's very easy to do it and europeans at that time did not know navigation see when vasco da gama came to india he came with the help of an indian navigator and he recorded in his book that the navigator is telling the distance by his teeth what a funny thing how do you tell distance by your teeth so uh, the thing was he was using the word malayalam word cow so arabic malayalam was the language they used use the word cow which means pole star also means teeth again another translation blunder so uh, uh, the point is that this is why calculus was transmitted because europeans had a navigational problem and for to solve that navigational problem they wanted accurate sign values which they got from here they also wanted an accurate calendar which also they got from india and uh, through the jesuit college which was set up at kochi so sidin christians acted as intermediaries india had christianity from long before jesuits came here 
So I don't know whether you understand this. Uh, maybe I can. This is the uh, original handwritten letter by Matteo Ricci, showing that he is looking for. I think that I have lost the audience. At least the persons who are sitting behind. So maybe I should wind up. I let me see where I am. And the point is that uh, just as Europeans made blunders about sign, about zero, they made blunders about calculus. The point is how to communicate it to you that what you are learning is wrong. What you have not quite learned, but you have picked up some bits and pieces, some words like limit and dot, 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 and so on and so forth. What is wrong with it? How to do this? So, well, there are lots of such blunders. And... Um, it's very easy to use. If you have any understanding of sign values, you can use it to calculate the size of the earth. I used to teach this to my students in Al-Bukhari University. So this is a group of students who, uh, whom I took on an uh, excursion where you just watch the sun setting to the horizon and then they are the, the sea and you can measure the size of the earth. It's very easy to do. Any child can do it, but you don't somehow learn it. And I think there is a problem. So anyway, European navigational problem was the biggest scientific problem of that time. The Royal Society, etc. were all started around that. And uh, it continued until the 18th century. It continued because they had no means of measuring the size of the Earth reliably. Okay, so let's look at infinite series, what you were calling Taylor series for the sign function. Infinite geometric series had already appeared in India by the 14th, 15th century. Geometric series exist even in the Rig Veda. They exist even in the Rhine Papyrus. They exist in Babylonian tables. But infinite geometric series are appear for the first time, where you get the sum of an infinite series in the Aryabhati Bhashya of Neil Kant. So this is what it states. And this is the translation, which is the same as the formula that you study, slightly different. Instead of a common multiple, it's taking a common division and gives the same form. But the point is that there is similar infinite series for pi. Now what do you do with the dot dot dot? This was a problem which the Europeans could not answer. Because they wanted a precise value and you cannot give a precise value, you say something more. And that is where the fundamental difference between Ganit and mathematics kicks in. That for all practical purposes pi equal to 3.14 may work. For engineering purposes that is fine. But if you want to have all the infinite number of decimal places, you can never hope to get them. So uh, this is the uh, series that you find for Leibniz series, so-called for pi, which is uh, this. Similarly, you find the so-called Taylor expansion for sine, cosine, and so on. It is there in my book. You can take a look. But they were not able to answer this problem of how you calculate, how you sum the entire series. Something is left out. Now maybe I move ahead to that. This is what puzzled them because they could not measure a curved line. How do you measure a curved line, length of a curved line in geometry? You talked about length of a curve, circle. How do you measure it? Okay, so Descartes did not know how to measure it. He said it is beyond the capacity of the human mind because you have to sum all the infinite terms and it will take an infinite amount of time to carry out the sum because 3.1415 is 3 plus 1 by 10 plus 4 by 100 plus and so on. How do you sum it perfect? And I think this was the issue that uh, they made foolish mistakes but the point is we made an even more foolish mistake. They made a mistake copying from us. We made a mistake copying them without checking whether it is valid, whether it is good, just repeating certain things mindlessly. And I hope if I have got that message across, that would be fine. So uh, you can take a look at how you measure curved lines in the Shilva Sutra. Shilva Sutra is about a string, about string geometry. Similar techniques were used in Egypt. So, uh, well, let's leave this out. I've already mentioned it. Let us see what happens in the Shilva Sutra. So in the Shurva Sutra, when you come across square root of 2, you say it is inexact. Savishish. You say it is non-eternal, anitya. That it is something remaining. And the same thing is used for the pi value that Aryabhat gives, which is called asana, near value, not precise. 
So uh, this is then the contrast between Ganit and mathematics that uh, Western mathematics believes in eternal truths, it believes in perfection, it believes that there is one number pi, a unique number pi, whereas here you say there is an infinity of different versions, use whichever one you like, which is uh, approximately one. So you don't need to do infinite sums, of course it's more technical than that, there is non-Archimedean arithmetic and so on, I won't go into that. But this, I think, is the central idea that you never need the exact value. So now today you have to ask yourself, why do you do the calculus? Do you do it for its practical applications? Or do you do it for... How do you do numerical methods? You can never do it precisely, you can never do it exactly, and all practical applications can be implemented on a computer. All right, so they can never be exact because a computer cannot handle infinity. When you talk of infinity, it is your imagination, but it's not there. So my point is that if calculus should be taught the way it developed in India as Ganesh, not as metaphysical mathematics, which you don't understand, and if you do that, it makes it very easy, you can solve much harder problems. Actual teaching experiments have been done, and with about eight groups in three countries. And this is one group in Kat Sarnath. This is one group in Tehran. This is one group in Ambedkar University, Delhi. And they're all very happy to see the kind of uh, thing they have written. And uh, a harder problem which can be done, you have done sine, cosine, you have not done the Jacobian elliptic functions. As I said, you never do elliptic integrals. Your integration differentiation is restricted to elementary. So I think if anybody is interested and stays on, I can demonstrate how you calculate Jacobian elliptic functions, SN, C and DN, very easily. There is a project which was done by my son, exact motion of the simple pendulum. See, you must know what the, you all the time write a formula t equal to 2 pi root over L by G, which is completely wrong. And it's the first experiment that you are performing. An experiment about science is something which you do with your hand, which you actually measure, not go by formula. Okay, so take a look at this pendulum project, just Google for it, look at these papers. And uh, the point is that these other countries have accepted Calculus as Ganit for its practical value, not because it originated in India. But Indians have not quite accepted it. And the question is whether you can make it happen. Thank you very much.